Hello everyone and welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're gonna be talking about malingering and factitious disorder. That is the topic of today's video. It's gonna be a fun video, a quick one. If you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, we got a playlist for the USMLE Step 1. So go check it out. It's broken down to subjects. So uh, go check out the psych video. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to your boy if you guys like what we're doing. We're posting new videos every single day. So with that being said, let's first talk about malingering. Malingering is a phenomenon that occurs in medicine quite often, and chances are you will definitely see someone who is malingering, uh, whether or not you catch it and whether or not you figure it out is uh, very you know difficult to say, but you will experience it one way or another. So one thing to know about malingering is that the symptoms are intentional. The symptoms that the patients are saying that they are going through are intentional, and the motivation of why they have these symptoms are conscious. They know why they have the motivation and they know that the symptoms that they're telling you are intentional, meaning they are not actually there. So what is malingering? Right? Maybe I should start off with that, but what is malingering? Malingering is consciously falsifying medical symptoms. A lot of patients will present to you and they will consciously falsify their medical symptoms in order to get X, Y, and Z. And we're gonna talk about that in a second, but that's what malingering is. So that's why I wanted to present the symptoms and the motivations earlier to make you understand that the symptoms are intentional, what they're telling you that they're feeling are intentional, and what their their motivation for it is also conscious. So they can fake and exaggerate the symptoms. They'll, you know, maybe they'll be acting, maybe they'll be showing you something's wrong. And all of this is done for a secondary external gain. That's really important to understand. They may want some opioids, right? They may want some drugs. So they will do this for a secondary external gain. They may also want workers' compensation. So that's both of those reasons are very common, especially in the step one, they're going to present in that way. Opioids is obviously really important because right now that we have an epidemic happening. So you can see that opioids will be something uh, that might present themselves very uh, often on step one. Now, one thing to understand is these patients are going to have very poor compliance with treatment and they're going to have very poor follow-up of diagnostic tests. The reason why is usually the external gain that they want, the secondary external gain that they want, does not require tests. It's usually short-lived. It's very quick returning. That's what they're looking for, something that happens right away and something that's easy for them to deal with. They don't want to go for follow-up exams. They don't want to go to diagnostic tests because it takes time to complete their, their goal. They just want a quick turnaround. So this is usually self-limiting. It goes away. It doesn't stay for a long time. Until, uh, you know, Once they've accomplished their goal, they're good. If they got the drugs, they're good. That's how it usually works. And it ends when the secondary gain is achieved, like I just said. So one example, like we said, is going to be you know opioids, workers' comp. And I put this GIF right here of Dr. House, MD, the best doctor out there. Uh, psych. Anyways, he writes, everybody lies. He says it all the time, right? Every patient lies. Everybody lies. And, and that's how I remember malingering. It's just, think about someone who comes to you, they just want to get drugs, they're acting, they're faking their symptoms, and they have a conscious motivation. That's malingering. On the other end of the spectrum is Munchausen syndrome. Munchausen syndrome, I'm sure you guys have all heard of it, but this is what it is. It's a factitious disorder imposed on self. That's what Munchausen syndrome is. Now, sometimes some people will refer to it as Munchausen, some people will refer to it as factitious disorder, but Essentially, what ends up happening is in this case, the symptoms are intentional. They know they're making up these symptoms. They're lying, right? That's why I got, you know, Harry right here, my boy, my boy, Mr. Potter, uh, saying you're a liar. The symptoms are intentional, but the motivation is unconscious, right? They're not doing it in on purpose. They have something else in the back of their mind that they're unconsciously causing them to have uh, a Munchausen syndrome. So one example could be, you know, them falsif they're consciously falsifying the medical symptoms. And the reason why they do that is to get medical attention and sympathy. Now, I've seen a lot of these questions pop up on the practice exams and on, you know, practice questions where it'll be someone who comes in, usually a nurse who's very well versed about the clinical system, and they'll come in with some sort of infection. And when you do an exam, you'll see that there's some sort of fecal uh, bacteria in the infection. So what pretty much they did was they cut themselves, they put some poop, right? They put their poops in the infection and then they presented once the infection got pretty bad just so they can get attention and medical uh, sympathy. That's very common. Uh, it's not self-limiting. This is different than, than malingering. They will come back over and over again because they're looking for an internal gain, a primary internal gain, which is attention pretty much. 
Uh, and it, usually they have a history of getting medical treatment at the facility that you're working at or that they're presenting. They're constantly there. They're kind of common. Everyone knows them and they like getting that. It's a chronic symptom. So another thing to understand is the risk factors for this are women. Women are more likely to do this than men, right? And uh, I was surprised to hear about that just because this was something that kind of caught me off guard. Another risk factor is someone who's unmarried, right? They may want some attention. They may not have a partner, so they're craving that type of attention. And prior or current healthcare workers are definitely, definitely uh, a risk factor because they know how the system works, they know how to get in the system, and they know how to kind of manipulate the system to get what they're looking for. Now, there's another sim sim uh, syndrome called Munchausen syndrome by proxy. And in this case, this fictitious disorder uh, imposed on self is usually done by a caregiver who falsifies medical symptoms, right? They're, made, they're doing it uh, by accident. And I'm sorry, it should be imposed on others, not by self. That's a small oversight. So this is a fictitious disorder imposed on others. Ignore the self part. Anyways, the caregiver who's taking care of the person is uh, falsifying medical symptoms and often it's the child of someone who is elderly. Maybe they want to get some pain meds. Maybe they just want to get the people to take care of the, the patient more. Whatever it may be, that's one uh, one example. Now, the motivation is usually to assume a sick role by proxy. That's one of the main motivations. And this is actually a form of child or elder abuse. So if you suspect this, you have to report it. Remember, we've said this earlier, but you're a mandatory reporter as a medical student and as a physician. So if you suspect uh, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, either in a child or an elder uh, elderly person, you have to report it to the authorities. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching this quick video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We're posting new videos pretty much daily. And if you guys don't know, you can actually find this lecture on your favorite podcast service for free. Just go search our name, Mad Medicine, and it'll pop up whether you're listening to Apple devices or Spotify. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and continue on to the next video.